Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called A Life Spent. Another episode I love, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. The show is rated TV14, so will this video be. And yeah, let's dive right in. So... Um, I know that... Obviously, it's not that the people Cassius answers to, I didn't catch the, let's see, she she's named Basha, I did not catch his name. Obviously, they're also terrible, they're also, they're not better than him, although, you know, according to their system, he is, they are, but... It is still very fun seeing Cassius be pushed around after we've seen him push around. And it is also just, yeah, you know, this kind of system, you know, he's not as high up, so so they get to push him around the way he pushes others around. And let's see... Yeah, based on his reaction, I don't think those were good news. And yeah, um, we do see now our agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are slaves. You know, doing really hard labor. They're being punished if they're considered to not work fast enough. You know, these kinds of things. So again, very, very sympathetic and very... Yeah you know, um, realistic depiction of of slavery. You know, it's one of those things, I think there's a, there are a number of, of people who they don't think that slavery is bad until it's happening to white men. So, you know, if this is a way to get them to care about slavery, if this gets the foot in the door, you know, and yeah, we learned that the the door is is rigged, so yeah, one can't simply one does not simply walk into Grail's office. And let's see, and we have the. <laughs> I appreciate that they're referring to that part of Earth as six one six. And, yeah, um, Gemma goes to, to help Abby, the inhuman, and, you know, it's just, it's so devastating hearing this young woman, it, yeah, I guess she is 18, they, they say, you know, when, when you turn 18, you go through, you know, and she's talking about, well, you know, all of us, when we turn 18, we go from Terra Genesis, I was the one who survived, and, you know, if this goes well, she could be, she, you know, the, this could improve conditions for her family. That's the dream, you know. And that, again, is something, you know, cer you know certain slaves are sometimes picked out and given a better life, in part so, you know, often in part so that they'll keep other slaves down. And let's see, you know, or if we're not talking about slavery, if we're talking about capitalism, I believe they're called middle managers. And, or is it just manager? I'm not, I'm, I'm still working on learning all of the, the terms. Some of this is still very new to me. Um, but yeah, the, the, and we see she's, she's, had this inhibitor implanted, which, um, yeah, see, I said I wouldn't spoil, so I'll just say it reminds me of something that came later in the MCU. Right, and I also, I realized that, I can't believe I, so, when I talked about, I want to say it was episode two of this season, I mentioned, you know, I like the Kree, the, the way, what the MCU does with the Kree, in Guardians of the Galaxy, I can't believe I forgot to mention. Obviously, I love what they do with the Kree, 
in Captain Marvel also. I should probably try to save face and say, you know, I was only talking about stuff that had come out before this, but no, I just 100% forgot. There's also some good Kree stuff in the Marvels, which is nowhere near as bad as some are saying. It's not an amazing movie, but it's really not. Yeah. Um, let's see. Now we have the... Um, um, oh, right, right. And there's also the that thing about, you know, there was... I, th I think his name was Flint. You know, he he was allowed to to stay there, but not when they're going on mission. You know, so he doesn't have a better place. You know, imagine having to to sleep in a you know a, a vehicle. You know, and and again, this is that is what a number of people you know have to to go through under capitalism and uh, let's see yeah um, in the entire bit where Elena is getting the the scroll is just so good you know she's like she's using her powers to set off the the scanner that that grill has and every time he goes off you know he looks and it's like she's standing right there she's not you know going out of bounds at all you know and and yeah he he approaches her and she's like i'm going as fast as i can quality line that was a very good because the audience no, no that's true she is going as fast as she can but you know to him it just sounds like she's insisting that she's not being so slow that she could be punished and and yeah you know he disables the the um the metric briefly to because you know appears to not be working properly it keeps registering her as as breaking the rules when she's not breaking any rules and as soon as he turns it off she you know speeds in gets the scroll hands it to to daisy and speeds back, and, and, you know, he's like, something, you know, but he can't prove anything. She didn't say or do anything that, you know, she's she's got the, the impish smile that we, the audience, have seen many times. But it's like, you know, to him it's like, okay, whatever, you know. It's, she doesn't appear to be doing anything. And... Let's see. Yeah, th them going off course is a matter of course. And and yeah, I like the you you're flailing around like a bunch of hungry hungry hippos. I thought we looked cool. And so, yeah, I know that's not a, a direct quote. And and yeah, you know, once they've knocked out Zev, you know, Tess insists they're going to kill us for this. Which again, you know, that's a, a sign of, of fascism. You know, like, like hypothetically, if you or I in a, you know, you know, not living in a fascist state, if you or I like assaulted someone, you know, that's not necessarily going to mean the the death penalty. Like, you know, you might there's there's a decent chance you're going to get some punishment. But, you know, we're talking, like, jail time or something, not the death penalty. You know, they they didn't kill him, you know. And I like Gemma, you know, helping, and, and she talks about, you know, mind over matter, in your case, literally. And... Oh, right, I, yeah, somehow I neglected to, to mention. Earlier we had the thing about... Ah, what's it called? The, um, yeah, you know, Mac seemingly, you know, went to, you know, did something that, you know, wasn't very careful for Elena. And then he says, see, I was doing recon, you know, after explaining. That is a, a very clever, because for sure, at first, it looked like that was what he was doing. That, yeah, good, good idea, good thinking, Mac. That's probably, you know... 
if if in in that situation think of think of like a something to yeah anyway um let's see yeah we have the line death comes easy around here which i am going to choose not to turn into a dirty joke and the 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 sacrifices i make and yeah you know Deke points out, you know, yesterday they they took out three of us. Tomorrow could be thirty, you know. The the and and again the the you know it's one of those things. The the fact that we the audience see three, that's going to make a really strong impression on us. You know, if they show thirty people, that's that feels excessive to show. But once you've shown three, and then you say thirty. We believe it, which, you know, if he, if he said they're going to kill 30 of us before we saw them kill even a single one, we might be like, would they really? You know, very nice, nicely done with how the, the story is being told. And let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, once he provokes, once Deke provokes Daisy, you know, he says, there, I, I knew you, you know, you, you world destroyer, you. And, you know, she's like, stay away from me. If you don't, I'll destroy you and your world. And, and yeah, I let, you know, they're, they're talking about what they're going to do with Zev. And Mac is like, that's murder. And Tess is like, it's math, you know. I'm going to try to use that if I'm ever caught, like, you know, your honor, it was not murder, it was math. And, yeah, the, the exhibit scene is just devastating, and it is this thing of, like, you know, we knew that she was going to be, Abby was going to be called upon to show off her powers, we didn't realize she was going to have to fight this massive beefcake. And, you know, honestly, for a little while there, I was sitting there thinking, I mean, I feel like maybe she's going to win, but on this show, I yeah, I could see them having, the, you know, this, this massive hunk of meat, you know, kill this 18-year-old this right in front of just, but, yeah, because there's been some really, really harsh stuff on the show so far. And they were actually, they were why they, they thought of doing that really, really early on, even, to set up that this is a show where this kind of thing could happen. But yeah, ultimately, you know, think of the stars, and, and she does, and yeah, you know, if you punch really hard against, like, lead, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna break your arm. I did briefly think that we're gonna see like the bones sticking out because clearly like his his you know they they were careful to not show his arm too much after that because yeah you you'd think it would be sticking out but but yeah and I appreciate that they showed us that in slow motion so we could really appreciate like you can sit there think okay that's one two you could count the the joints and and you know as as they're being just destroyed by the, yeah, and, you know, he goes to, to grab her by the throat, and, and, you know, she sticks her hand in, you know, going, what's the word, uh, you know, when, when she's, yeah, she's phasing through, let's go with that, and then she turns, you know, I don't think she would even have to turn her, her hand into lead there, she could just turn it normal, yeah, she she ruptured some organs there, and that's that's it. Like you are just gone. It it really would not take very. I I think for for him to die, he seemed to die almost immediately. That would pretty much mean the heart was. But yeah, I th I would say that's consistent with where her hand was. So yeah, good job on the accuracy. Like if she just like punctured his his shoulder and then he fell over dead, I'd be like. Really? And let's see. Yeah, and, and we see that, you know, she's sold by Cassius to to serve Basha. 
and I, I, very clever with the, with the elevator, you know, the doors are almost closing, and then an arm goes in and, and stops the, the doors, and the doors open again, and we think, oh, you know, is, is Daisy going to get caught, and the guy doesn't react, and there doesn't appear to be anyone, and then the camera tilts, and we see she's, she's out there, because that's what she was doing, in the, you know, it wouldn't take her very long at all. And yeah, it looks like it's gonna work. And then someone else shows up, and and yeah, you know, she she's sliding ever so slightly, and the shoes squeak, and you know, the the two, the two Kree are like, and they look up, you know, because of course you would, you know, it's like, what is making that noise? That's you know, and and yeah, we have, I really thought this would work, because there's so many shows where that would work. And yeah, very cool fight on the elevator. And I appreciate the detail that a lot of the time Daisy is like avoiding being hit. And the one time she does get hit, she flies through the air because Kree have super strength. And let's see. Yeah, and, and very, very clever when Elena frames Zev because, yeah, you know, she already knew there was a gun there. And, you know, Grill is obviously not going to say you took my gun it's it's gonna be you know you stole it from someone you know and and yeah you know he he feels confident he he said yeah yeah go ahead and search me and i'm not sure that it would have done him any good to to try to talk his way out of it anyway but yeah very clever and and you know elena says you know might as well search him i know you know i know i'm not lying because i know the penalty for lying and, and, yeah, that's pretty persuasive. You know, Grill's like, I mean, she doesn't seem like a glutton for punishment. She knows we've punished her for less than lying. You know, yeah. And and that is a, a very clever way. And I appreciate this thing of, like, early in the episode, like, Mac didn't want to, to kill him. I, I mean, I don't know if Elena knew for sure that this would mean he would be killed, but she's been here, you know, she's been on the, uh, this, this place long enough to, to know there's a decent chance they're gonna kill him for this. That's, that's kind of their go-to move, you know. Execution is the answer, I forgot the question. And so, so yeah, you know, the episode sets up, you know, it's, it's, you know, ethics are great, but there are certain situations where it there really is no other way, and and sadly that is sometimes the the truth when fighting fascism. And you know, obviously it's a last resort. To be clear, it's one hundred percent a last resort. And Daisy gets a lot of the way, and then we see Deke went to Cassius and told him, just yeah, and and you know on. On some level, we can appreciate his point of view, although obviously we hate his guts for it because we sympathize so much with Daisy. But yeah, you know, if he legitimately thinks they're going to kill 30 human beings if he doesn't stop her, yeah, there there is a certain... Because, you know, if Cassius is like, oh, I don't know, I, I like the idea of a summary execution, you know, D could be like, Keep in mind, I, a human, told you about this. You know, that that might, you know, Cassius does seem like he's, yeah, he certainly is susceptible to flattery, we know that. And, yeah, we, we close on Zev screaming as he's killed. Very, yeah, very, very harsh. And I do also like, you know, the, the yeah, like, the the radio thing does make sense that, you know, the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are the, dele the delegation. So, yeah, really, really excited to see. And, and also, it seems like by the end of this episode, the, the, basically the agents are all you know, slaves are going to be slaves, even May and, and Daisy, who until now were 
we're not. So, so you know, basically, like they're they're making very tiny progress, but also significant. Like, yeah, what's the word? They are. Um, they're they're losing some. It's you know almost a pyrrhic victory even. Arguably. So, uh, MDB trivia for this episode. Mac comments, he does not want to die where no one can hear him scream. There's a reference to the tagline of the 1979 film Alien in Space. No one can hear him scream. <laughs> Coulson mentions objects in space. This was the name of an episode from one of Joss Whedon's other sci-fi shows. Objects in space. Ah, that was a Firefly episode. And, ah, oh, right, Pro Taylor wins Ray Kilstead and Eve Harlow were all in Heroes Reborn. Um, let's see. I think that might be about, yeah, um, so I should be able to do an episode again tomorrow. Let's see. Yeah, a lot of the the um, the best quotes from this episode are indeed in the IMDb quotes section for the episode. I like Mac taking issue with you know. Like, you know what a squirrel is. So, less than 24 hours and you've already been taken prisoner. That a record? Not even close. And... See. Say which will about our future dystopian horror show. It has a nice view. Dazzling. And... Let's see. Yeah, I, I like the the you know them bringing up you know multiverse theory, quantum physics, and see. yeah, don't you think you're kind of deflecting from what I told you about? I'm not deflecting because I didn't do it. Yeah, that's what deflecting is.